one of the big places on the the stock market, of course, <laughs> uh, big pharmaceutical companies. And, and defying the president, those drug makers plan to hike prescription drug prices again in 2019. Seth Denson here is the president and co-founder of GDP Advisors. Seth, welcome back. Steve, good to be with you. Happy New Year. Uh, good to be with you. Uh, happy New Year to you. Enjoy the ride. It was a free fall to start the uh, the year, and then, again, looks like it's going to open in positive territory is the market and are the markets today. So... Uh, how much of this is? How much of this volatility should we expect going forward? Is this going to be a daily, a weekly uh, event going forward? Well, listen, I've said for a while that I thought that the the stock market, especially the Dow Jones, was, was kind of uh, overly inflated. Anyway, I remember when I first got into the analyst market back in '99, we thought, man, if the Dow ever got to twelve thousand points, what would the world do? Uh, well, now it's nearly twenty four thousand points. So, <laughs> you know, this is. The, the, to ensure your listeners, though, the only people that get hurt on roller coasters are people that jump off the middle of the ride, right? Keep so, the seatbelt on. Be calm. We'll be all right. Stay yeah. the course. I remember my father years ago saying, I, ne- I never thought I'd live long enough, Steve, to see the Dow Jones make it to 7,000. Can you believe it's that high? I mean, seriously. Like, you know, and he was always in the market. And uh, he worked for one of these big pharmaceutical companies, uh, was a pharmaceutical rep for Dow Chemical, actually, based in Michigan, uh, which is now Dow DuPont. But as you look at what's going on with drug makers, drug prices, and so forth, uh, Donald Trump trying to find a way to keep prices down and keep them lower. But the drug manufacturers say, listen, we got to make a profit. What's going on? Well, listen, I, I, I agree with what you said in your last segment, talking about this president approaches things very differently. Um, and I have been a big fan of his approach to health care. You know, under the Obama administration, we had an approach that was very, hey, insurance-oriented. Let's focus on the insurance financing mechanism. But Donald Trump, and, and in large part, Alex Azar, the Secretary of Health and Human Services, who is a former drug executive, came in and said, yeah, our problem in the United States isn't insurance. Insurance is effectively a derivative of the problem, which is the cost of health care. And we're going to go after that. And we're not going to pull punches. And so this on the surface looks like somewhat of a slap in the face to to the Trump administration from Big Pharma. Because if you might remember, last year they announced that they were going to increase their prices. And then they kind of got shamed by the White House enough to say, well, we'll hold off till 2019. Well, 2019's here and those chickens have come home to roost, so to speak. Okay, so here we are trying to figure out where we go. And you look at health care, obviously that's going to be one of the big battles in in D.C. for the next uh, year or two if they take time out of impeachment processes and so forth and, and things of that nature. And um, And we're going to see that battle over the Affordable Care Act. And one of the most important things, I think, is truth and pricing. And so I am... I'm a believer that truth and pricing is extremely important, uh, but I don't know how you apply that to the pharmaceutical industry. I believe that they should be able to make profit when they do research and development worth billions of dollars, and they should be able to reap the rewards if they find drugs that keep people from, from dying, if they can you know, prevent heart disease or diabetes or whatever it is. I believe in that because it takes that kind of incentive of a payoff for them to create the drugs that save lives, right? But there's got to be a balance there. Again, you know me, Steve. I'm a free market capitalist. If you took the free market capitalistic system away from healthcare that we have now and we moved to something like a single payer Medicare for all, you can forget us advancing medicine anymore. This just won't exist. And matter of fact, it's funny. You know, the rest of the world who mostly has some form of socialized medicine relies on the United States not having socialized medicine so that we can actually cure something or treat something more effectively. So we need America's innovation in that free market system that allows that. Now, here's the challenge to your point, and I have stated the same thing. We need transparency in the system. The free market works best when the consumer can be informed and make decisions based on that. And here's how we do that in the pharmaceutical industry. And again, Alex Azar is pushing for pharmaceutical companies to be required in their TV commercials to post the average cost of the drug. And so that that's a pretty simple step. And of course pharmaceuticals are, are pushing back against that, but we need to bring into the light all of the pieces of the puzzle too. You know, PBMs, which are pharmacy benefit managers, are actually responsible for the distribution of drugs in the United States. These are middlemen, so to speak, that negotiate between the insurance company and the pharmaceutical uh, industry. Here's the problem. 80% of the drugs distributed in the United States are done by, so by one of three PBMs. 
all three PBMs as of last year are now owned by insurance companies. So you, know, you got this. You want to talk about collusion? I can spell it for you because we can so see hold it on, directly so hold on. in the healthcare this, this, system right now. That's the stuff that we need to change and at least here's the, the red flag so the consumers and voters know. Right. Here's the red flag because you just raised it for me, Seth, because – a couple of times in the last year, first time in 2018 I've had this happen, uh, the insurance company says, no, you don't get that. And I'm like, well, wait a second. I just walked in here with a prescription from my doctor, and they said, no, insurance company said no. And I'm like, what? And now you're now I understand why. If the, if the PBMs are being controlled and owned by the insurance company, well, then that would explain uh, the relationship that's creating me problems. That's exactly right, and it's interesting. One of the talking points of, pharma, of Big Pharma this week was that, you know, well, don't worry, most Americans actually won't see this. We're just raising our list prices, and your copays won't go up. Well, no, your copays aren't going to go up because they want you paying that low rate because here's what the insurance company is going to then turn around and do. They're going to raise your insurance premiums. And so right. they get the money on the back end from the insurance premiums, and then they get it on the other end from the PBM that's paying them what, in effect, is a commission on the drug that you – take. It's crazy that we allow this to happen. This is crony capitalism at its best. Yeah, crony capitalism. There it is. And I agree with you. That's something that needs to be cleaned up. Truth in pricing needs to be, you know, we'd have to have transparency and pricing for, for medicine in America. American health care isn't the problem. I'll tell you that. It's the way we pay for it and the way that we get gamed the way we just did in, in that conversation. Seth, greatly appreciate it. Always bring a clear clarification to the conversation. Thank you for being here. Happy New Year. Thanks, Dave. Great being with you. There you have it, Seth Dennison, president and co-founder of GDP Advisors, clearing some things up for us right here on the Steve Gerber Show.